In the area of technology, we're using this new tool called functional near-infrared spectroscopy, which basically means I can put this little hat on a kid's head and measure blood flow. And the reason that's important is what I really want to know is what parts of the brain use the most oxygen. So if I give a young child a task, uh, they're being presented with pictures of faces, and every now and again their mom's face shows up, the part of the brain that's doing the work, like that's my mom's face, uh, has the big, places the biggest demands on, uh, on oxygen. The way to get oxygen is to increase the blood flow. And this technique, which is again just by placing little sensors on the head, can measure within a few millimeters exactly what parts of the brain are doing that. Now it's limited in only being able to examine the surface of the brain. And the reason for that is that it uses lasers to pass light through the skull into the brain and then it bends. And if it's blue, it's oxygenated, and if it's red, it's deoxygenated, right? But you can't look at deep structures in the brain. So I'm interested in memory, which sits between my ears in the middle. You can't, if you have a laser strong enough to get to the middle of the brain, you can imagine the damage you've done on the way in there. So it has some limitations in allowing us to look just at the surface. The other place we've made some uh, inroads is that people like me who study the human depend a lot on those who study the animal or who study the adult and we're, we're gaining more traction now in understanding what parts of the brain are responsible for what behaviors. So then I take that with my knowledge of brain development and I say, okay, so what should I expect in a one-year-old or a five-year-old? And that's how, that's how we work, basically.